And now I'd like to, uh, <laughs> like to read a, a letter here. Uh, uh, we wish to add our voices to the chorus of those singing the praises of James Randi this evening and congratulate him on this Lifetime Achievement Award from the Independent Investigations Group. We're proud and pleased that the award can be presented in the West Coast Center uh, the West Coast home of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, Center for Inquiry. Randy was one of the original founders of SISOP and uh, the Committee for Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal back in 1976, and for many decades has been one of the leading lights of the rational and skeptical movement as it fought back against a rising tide of superstition and gullibility sweeping the world. We are honored to call James Randy our colleague, but more so to call him our friend. Unfortunately, we're unable to take part in this evening's event, but we congratulate Randy once again, look forward to celebrating his future achievements. Paul Kurtz, Chairman and Barry Carr, Executive Director, Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, Center for Inquiry Transnational. Ooh. Skepticism is globalizing. James Randi, congratulations. Please come up. In the company of so many uh, good friends is uh, indeed heartwarming. Uh, just came back from Las Vegas, as you know. There were 900 of them out there, but this is a very good representation. I always say it's not quantity, it's quality, you see. So it's all concentrated in this room here tonight. My good friend Julia and Provenza. I mean, uh, you notice that uh, most of us wore black against the black background. It's, it's, it's theater, you know. So you just see a head floating around like a disembodied thing, which is all in spirit of the whole business. Steve, Steve, you, you appreciate that, don't you? He says yes. Uh, it, it's very strange to uh, know that all these backgrounds, they always use black, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know, is, that, is there something secretive about this business? I don't know. You, you just walk in front of it as I'm dressing, and everything vanishes except your uh, visage there. So uh, I think maybe there is a sort of a scheme going. You don't really want to be recognized. And uh, another thing too, uh, I'm very pleased to be beside this lady because I can actually slightly look down and see her nose. Everyone else, you know, everyone in the world is taller than I am. It's not really astonishing. I, I can't believe it. It's not fair and it's not right and it's supernatural. There's no two ways about it. I would like to... Uh, I, I, w I would like to mention a gentleman who has also passed uh, away not uh, too long ago, Arthur C. Clarke, who is a good friend of mine. <laughs> and a very rational man, but I, I will give you just a little uh, uh, hint of the kind of character he was. Uh, years ago, they named an asteroid after me. I always thought it was a half asteroid, but no, it was a full one. <laughs> And uh, I wrote him on email and I said, Arthur, guess what? Pardon me, Sir Arthur. But I said, Arthur, they've just named an asteroid after me. And he wrote me back. I gave him the details and the orbital elements and whatnot so he could see it. Uh, and I said, uh, it's quite a distinction. And he wrote me back. And he said, yes, uh, I had one named after me eight years ago. <laughs> so I looked it up in the International Ast Astronomical Union and I found the uh, parameters of the orbits and whatnot. I had the great pleasure of emailing him back and said, uh, Arthur, I've looked it up. And it turns out that my asteroid uh, is, uh, well, yours is, is 11 kilometers on a side. Mine is 24 kilometers on a side. My asteroid is bigger than yours. <laughs> Come to think of it, I never heard from him again after that. <laughs> But to have a bigger asteroid than Arthur C. Clarke is somewhat of a distinction, I guess. And I threatened to drop it on Uri Geller if he misbehaves anymore. So there. By the way, I just, I just want to point out that this is, uh, this is sharpened so you can actually stab him with it. Yeah, I noticed that when you had it to me. Yes, yes. A hot knife through butter. Yes, well, if he wants to you know, give me a hug or something, come on over, hug me. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I'm really honored by this, and it will go on a place of honor on our sort of a a trophy desk that I have uh, back at the foundation. Um, put it on your asteroid. <laughs> Where did he come from? 
Yes. Oh, yes, that's right. We could send it up there and uh, yeah, uh, just show it to the whole world and the whole universe, as a matter of fact. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you, Provenza. And uh, thank you to the organization. Thank you so much. I'm very honored. Thanks for coming out. Um, we're going to, well, Randy's got a, yeah, do we want to see a trick from Randy? Do we want to see a trick? Get up here. One trick. And then we're going to take some pictures afterward on stage. If you want to bring your cameras up, uh, we'll do this after. I don't register on film, so make sure it's digital. <laughs> That's why I grew the beard. I kept on cutting my nose off in the mirror, you know, with the razor, so. All right. Um, yes, I'd like to have two gentlemen uh, volunteers up on stage, uh, two good, sturdy gentlemen. Uh, do we have a couple of them down there? Uh, no, you were sitting in the front row. They, they may think, oh, it's my dad. Yeah. Uh, no. Yes, all right. Come on. Come on up here. Let's get them up here on the stage. Uh, you're volunteers, and you're absolutely unprepared. Right, Sam? Right, George? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're not all that big, but they're okay. Now, I, I'll, leave, I'll leave the microphone because I guess I can yell at you. demonstration of something that uh, Harry Houdini, after all, we should honor him by a demonstration, I think, uh, used to do. A slightly different style, but uh, nonetheless, it's uh, equivalent to this. I'll take off my wristwatch for a moment here and put it in a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I would like to ask these gentlemen, uh, if, I wonder if they have a piece of rope about that big. They, this is a Oh, wait, I have a piece of bed. <laughs> 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 Hold on to that end, too. That's now called your end. Okay. Okay. Hold firmly. Not like this. Not like that. Oh, that's it. All right. <laughs> now pull on it to make sure it's good and strong. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. Let go now. It's my rope after all. <laughs> now, I am going to ask these gentlemen to tie my hands together behind my back. We'll start out by doing this. Hold on to your end again. Okay. And you hold on to your end, sir. Pull on it very tight with me. Oh, the pain! It's just an act. No, no, very tight, very tight. Now, keeping it tight, bring it around and top and tie the other hand on top. Try not to catch the puppets in there or I have to get a new one. All right. Pull it really tight now. Come on. Oh, that's not tight enough. Come on, the other end there. That's it. One on each end. One on each end and pull it. That's it. Oh, the pain. Is there enough rope? Yeah, there's enough. Try another one. Why not? Same thing. Oh, my. That is tight. Thank you. Quadruple nut. All right. Now, these gentlemen have tied my hands tightly with this piece of fine rope here. Yeah, I'm having trouble. Uh, oh, you can. Very nice. Oh, there it is over there. Would you get me that chair over there and bring it over here? Sure. <laughs> Come on, heave on it. 
Get your finger out now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that didn't take a knot. What kind of knot is this? All right. <laughs> Thank you.